Hey, Greg Bills hasn't made a physics video in a while. I wonder when he'll come back and do it. Well, it's been over four months since I've done one, so maybe today that'll change? Let's see, uh, okay, let's do this topic. Welcome to Time Dilation Explained Through Minecraft. I hope you enjoy. Just before I move on, this video will be purely conceptual. I won't be teaching any equations or anything like that. This is just an analogy to hopefully help people understand what time dilation is. So first, in order for us to understand time dilation and what it is, we have to understand two fundamental physics rules. The absolute nature of the speed of light and frames of reference of velocity. Let's look at the speed of light first. One of the fundamental laws of physics is that light is fixed at this huge speed for everyone, no matter who observes it and what relative motion it's in. This is an incredibly unique trait for a few reasons. To understand why, we have to explore the second thing, which is frames of references of velocity with this scenario. Let's say that this player named Zero is standing still. And now a player named Set walks to the right at 3 meters per second. Now let's say that another player walks to the right again at 5 meters per second instead. What do both of them see? Well, Zero sees that the third player is moving to the right at 5 meters per second. That's what he sees. But Set, he sees something different. He sees the third player moving at 2 meters per second. So we can see that based on someone's motion, they perceive other object speeds differently. This is what we mean by frame of reference. Now this frame of reference stuff is true for all velocities in the universe. Just to give one more example, when we talk about this scenario, we're not even taking into account the spin of the Earth or Earth moving through space, because in our frame of reference, that doesn't matter. So even though Zero isn't technically truly standing still, in our frame of reference, that doesn't matter and he is. Now let's go back to light. Unlike the player, the rule for light is that the observed speed of light will be the same for everybody, no matter the frame of reference. This can be extremely confusing, because it implies that if we replace the third player with a beam of light, both Set and Zero will see it move at the exact same speed, at the speed of light, regardless of how they're moving beforehand. Uh, how is that possible? Well, to understand how, let's explore one of the most famous thought experiments for time dilation, the reflecting light scenario. Let's take Zero and Set once again, but this time, we put Set on a big flying machine that goes very fast, and we put Zero on the ground. Now let's equip both of them with two mirrors that face each other. Both of them will have a light ray that bounces between the mirrors, going up and down and up and down. Now at this moment, Zero will observe the light ray on the ground going up and down at a normal speed. On the flying machine, Set will also observe the same thing. The light ray will be going up and down at the speed of light. So far, so good. Now the problem occurs when Zero now looks at Set and observes the flying machine from the ground. To him, the light ray in Set's flying machine not only goes up and down, but to the side as well, since that's the direction he's going in. So instead of following a straight path up and down, Zero instead sees the light ray take a zigzag direction like this. Now this is really really strange because the light ray to set is still going up and down at the speed of light normally. He sees exactly what Zero sees with his own mirrors. But now, to Zero, he sees that the light ray is covering more ground since it's going in a zigzag direction. We know that the speed equals distance over time, so according to Zero, Set's light ray covers more distance than Zero's, meaning that his light ray is traveling faster? Huh? This was a huge dilemma for physicists, until Einstein proposed that no, the speed is still the same, it's just that because the distance increases, time must dilate with it. And it's the video title, you know, yeah. Time dilation, yeah. So since the equation for velocity is distance over time, Set's distance according to zero increases, so then the time must increase as well. So according to zero, Set's time actually slows down so that when he observes it, the speed of light is still the same to zero. Now what's extra trippy is that to set, this doesn't register. The light ray to him is still only going up and down. So he doesn't feel this time slowing, it still feels normal to him. Now the faster set goes, 
the longer the zigzag path of the light ray and therefore the slower time goes. So now let's say that Set looks outside his flying machine and observes Zero. Well to him, he's still standing still while Zero is flying away from him. So this means that his light ray is covering more distance and has that zigzag form again. So then does Zero's time slow down? Wait, how is this possible for both of them to observe the other's time slowing down? This is due to how the movement of the observer skews their perception of time and therefore their idea of what now is. To give another example, let's put Set and Zero next to each other and equip each of them with a clock. Now let's say that Set runs in one direction really really quickly. So while Set's running in one direction, let's look at Zero. Each second of Zero's clock goes by normally. But when Zero looks at Set's clock, each second that ticks by is Set getting further and further away. So the light rays that indicate each second on Set's clock become more spaced out. And Zero's eyes process that as Set's clock slowing down. If we go over to Set, the same thing happens. Zero is moving away, and so each second is spaced out, causing him to think that Zero's clock is slow. They both mutually agree that the other person's clock is slower. And we can see how they are both correct in what they see, but it's just because their own perceptions of now are skewed because of their motion. In this scenario, the absolute answer doesn't exist. Now you might be asking, if they meet up, wouldn't they be different ages? Maybe you've seen like a movie that involves this. And yes, that is true, but in order for them to even meet up, one of them, either Set or Zero, has to turn around and go back to the starting point, which involves changing the direction of your velocity and having a non-zero acceleration. This situation of both Zero and Set seeing each other as slowing down relies on them having constant velocities. So for them to meet up would involve one of them to break this and therefore have different time dilation rates, which is a topic too complicated right now, but it does lead to different ages. And that's about all I have right now for time dilation. This was super super baseline, and it's my best attempt at explaining time dilation for anyone who doesn't know anything about it. So if you guys want me to start making physics videos again, then let me know. I can always dive deeper into special relativity and maybe general relativity if you guys want. So hopefully you guys learned something new. Best of luck with your studies, and bye bye